The Red Sox appear to be really interested in this Cubs starter. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. At the time of this recording, things probably have changed since I recorded this video to when you're watching this video, but we have no idea which way the Red Sox are going to go at this year's deadline. However, what we do know is that they have been looking into one starter from the Chicago Cubs that may make a lot of sense for this Red Sox team, a starter by the name of Jamison Tyon. So what we are going to do in today's video is go over the reports about the Red Sox and their pursuit of Jamison Tyon. Tyon, and we're going to talk about why he makes sense for the Red Sox, plus what it would take to get him, and if this is a realistic option. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. The report that we are talking about today actually came out a little while ago. It was last week at the time that you were watching this video, and it was from Bob Nightingale, who mentioned in an article where he was going over the latest surrounding the deadline that both the Red Sox and the New York Yankees have had conversations about a trade between the Cubs and Jamison Tyon. Now, at the time, the Cubs weren't really sure which way they were going to go at the deadline yet. There was still a possibility that they were going to fall more in the buyer's market than the seller's market, which obviously throws a wrench in this entire thing. However, things in recent days have changed a little bit. Since the Cubs came out of the All-Star break, they didn't do too well in their first few games, and barring any sort of win streak or anything like that, it's looking more like the Cubs are going to be moderate sellers than they are buyers, which is really good news for the Boston Red Sox. Now, the first thing we have to look at with this report is the source itself. Bob Nightingale historically hasn't been the most accurate reporter of all time. There have been times where Bob Nightingale's been way off, but with this one in particular and with where the Cubs are at going into the MLB deadline, I do think there's some very legitimate validity to this claim. And if it is true, this could be really interesting for the Red Sox because Jamison Tyon as a pitcher could be exactly what the Sox are looking for. Tyon has had a super interesting career. Career-wise, the ERA is at a 3.9 even with basically a dead even 3.92 FIP. His whip is a little bit high at one. 0.216 and he has an ERA plus 106 which puts him at 6% more productive than the average pitcher in Major League Baseball during his eight years of service time. Now that might not be the most exciting stat line in the world but what it is is a very solid back end of the rotation type pitcher. If your back end of the rotation pitcher is pitching to the tune of a 106 ERA plus you're probably in a pretty good spot. However what makes his career really interesting is that basically every other year James Jamison Tyon looks absolutely dominant. If you take a look at that career, the first year it was a 3.38 ERA, the second year it was a 4.44. Third year, 3.2. Fourth year, 4.1. And recently, between 2022, it was a 3.91. And last year, it was a 4.84. This year, he looks maybe the best he's ever looked on the mound. Currently, in 17 games, he's a 296 ERA with almost a run higher FIP at 3.77, which isn't exactly incredibly encouraging, but it's absolutely not terrible either. His whip is at 1.146. And overall, he is an ERA plus of 100. 40 percent better than the average pitcher in the league that would be a huge boost to this Red Sox rotation not only that but he's also not really walking a lot of guys either this season he has a walk rate of 5.1 percent which is about 3.4 percent below league average what you're talking about statistically here for the Boston Red Sox is a really solid four or five starter and again is this the most exciting possible trade on the open market right now? No, it's not, but that could be exactly what the Red Sox need. I know Co Cooper Criswell's coming off a start where he absolutely dominated the Colorado Rockies, but the bullpen's in shambles a little bit with the injuries to Slayton and Martin. We probably have a more accurate update by the time this video is coming out, but being able to put a guy like Cooper Criswell into the Red Sox bullpen would do absolute wonders, and you get a guy in Jamison Tyon who's going to most likely give you a round league average production in the back half of 2024. Again, not the most exciting in the world, but absolutely something the Red Sox could desperately use. On top of that, more importantly, in my opinion, is the fact that Jamison Tyon is a proven major league pitcher. That is not a knock on the play.
players already in the Red Sox rotation. What it is, is an improvement on what they currently have. The reason for this is because the same reason we have talked about, what, a thousand times on this channel right now, the Red Sox are in completely unknown territory with 90% of this rotation right now. Everyone outside of Nick Pavetta has not pitched a full season in Major League Baseball yet. There's going to be a ton of question marks coming into the second half of the season as to what the Red Sox are going to look like in September, in late August, with these guys who have never pitched more than 100 plus innings in their entire career. Outside of Brian Bayo, everyone else has not pitched over 130 innings, and even Brian Bayo himself has never really pitched a full season in Major League Baseball. Jamison Tyon has done that a couple of times. Over his career, he has four full seasons, making at least 29 starts. Getting someone in here who understands the stress of a full season on an arm could be something that becomes very valuable for the Boston Red Sox. Another reason this trade becomes really interesting is because it's not a rental. Jamison Tyon would be a longer term buy for the Boston Red Sox. He's currently under contract until 2026. During that time, he's owed $18 million a year, but only 17 of that is going towards the luxury tax. This is a huge if, but if the Red Sox are willing to take on that type of salary, they could end up with a guy who is a solid back end of the rotation type piece for the next couple of years, which could be something that makes this really interesting for the Red Sox because again, like we've talked about a hundred times, right now the Red Sox are trying to balance a team that is overperforming now and a team that they think is going to be fantastic over the next couple of years. Jamison Tyon kind of feels like if you look at him statistically and in terms of what he would bring to the Red Sox outside of his statistics, feels like a really solid fit for what the Red Sox are trying to do. But there are two really important questions that we need to answer. What is it going to take to get Jamison Tyon here? And is this a realistic possibility? But before we get into those, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton. It's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Thank you all very much for taking a second and doing so. Let's go over the rest of this. So hypothetically, looking at what it would take to get Jamison Tyon to the Boston Red Sox, it really wouldn't take all that much. The biggest reason for this is because of the salary attached to Jamison Tyon, combined with the fact that he is under contract until he's going to be 35 years old. Those are two things that are weighing down the value on Jamison Tyon on the open market right now. In fact, baseball trade values currently has Jamison Tyon with a value of negative $13.1 million per year. What this means is essentially for the Red Sox is you could hypothetically get Tyon for next to nothing. What you could do is you could throw a couple of Rule 5 eligible guys at the end of this season at the Chicago Cubs to see if they stick. Something like a Nathan Hickey and Matthew Lugo for Jamison Tyon would make some sense in this hypothetical world because even with the negative value, you're obviously going to have to give something up to receive something. But the big thing, and like we always talk about with these trade rumors, is that baseball trade values is just a starting point, right? It is a hypothetical on paper situation but when you bring it into the real world things get a bit more tricky for starters Jamison Tyon is a starting pitcher who if the Cubs make available is going to be a very scarce resource at the MLB deadline right there are not going to be a ton of teams who are going to be willing to give up any sort of starting pitching and on top of that willing to give up starting pitching that's under control past 2024 that is absolutely going to add some value to what Jamison Tyon's going to cost this team Team. On top of that, there's also the possibility that Cubs realize that, hey, if we take on some of his salary, we can still shed a bunch of salary and get something much more valuable in return. Hypothetically here, the Cubs could say, hey, what if we take on half of Jamison Tyon's salary and get something that means a lot more to this system? Now, all of a sudden, you're going from negative 13.1 million in value to 9 million in value. That is a big difference in terms of the prospect capital the Red Sox would have to give up. Now you're getting into the territory of guys like Mikey Romero and Nick York, who are two 
pretty interesting prospects for the Boston Red Sox and would be something that I don't know if the Red Sox would be willing to go to for a guy like Jamison Tyon. Combine that again with the fact that he is a scarcity on a market that is already scarce to begin with, and you could be talking about a fairly hefty price for who Jamison Tyon is on paper. Now, the big thing here, in my opinion, when it comes to whether or not this trade is realistic is, one, what the Red Sox are going to be willing to give up. Are the Red Sox going to be willing to go that level? let's say, extra mile to get Jamison Tyon on this team. Really blow the Cubs away with an offer that they just simply can't refuse. I don't know if the Red Sox are going to be willing to do that. On the other hand here, if the Red Sox are willing to do that, which there is a chance that they are, the big thing here is that I don't know if the value that the Red Sox have in their system makes a ton of sense for the Chicago Cubs. Right now, the Cubs have two pretty decent mainstays on their team in the middle infield in Dansby Swanson and Nico Horn. Horner. Now, I don't know if Horner's doing really well this year. I know Dansby isn't exactly fantastic, but those are guys that they are trying to build around on this team right now. The Red Sox biggest value in their system is is middle infielders. Guys who are going to sort of move the needle in trades probably come from the middle infield, which means that a matchup between the Cubs and the Red Sox might be a bit trickier than we think. Now, there is a possibility that Cubs view Nick York as a player that they think they could convert into a full-time outfielder. He is playing outfield with the Worcester Red Sox and is playing it fairly well, so there is that possibility there. But guys like Nathan Hickey and Matthew Lugo, who don't have a ton of value on paper, again, a according to baseball trade values, could become way more interesting as we get closer to this deadline because, again, they're guys that just simply don't play those middle infield positions. In my opinion, when we're looking at this overall, again, it's not the flashy trade, it's not the crazy trade, but it could be exactly what the Boston Red Sox are looking for. On paper, Jamison Tyon feels like the Red Sox could hit all of their biggest needs in one felt swoop. On top of that, you also have Craig Breslow, who came from the Cubs organization. He understands Jamison Tyon on a level a lot of other GMs or CBOs, whatever you want to call them, don't really understand. And he has those connections to the Cubs that could play a big factor here in how they get a deal done, either positively or negatively, right? Because if you're the GM of the Cubs, you don't really want to lose a trade to a guy who was at one point behind you and it's now one of your peers, right? You just simply don't want to do that. So it could affect this trade either positively or negatively. Looking at the fit, this feels like a realistic option for the Boston Red Sox. He is under control for a little bit. He would take on some salary so he wouldn't be worth a whole lot. Craig Breslow is comfortable and familiar with him and he sort of fits right into that Bailey mode. A guy who throws a ton of strikes, who has a really above average pitch that he leans on in performances on the mound. That's right up Andrew Bailey's alley is a guy that they can really sort of turn around here and make a pretty deadly pitcher in Major League Baseball. And on top of all of that, he's not going to cost a ton. I think this feels like a guy, in my opinion, that the Red Sox absolutely go after. Now, again, at the time of this recording, I have no idea which way the Red Sox are going to go. There's a very real possibility that by, that by the time you're watching this, even in the couple of days in between here, we have a more clear picture as to where the Red Sox are going at this year's deadline, but if they do end up leaning more towards buying than selling, I would expect a lot more reports about the Red Sox talking to the Cubs with Jamison Tyon. This feels like right up their alley in terms of guys that they would be willing to buy on. So, I would keep a real big eye out on Jamison Tyon and the Red Sox, but that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? What do you think about the possibility of the Red Sox targeting Jamison Tyon at this year's deadline? Is this something that you would be willing to do? Is this someone you want the Red Sox to get, or is this someone you want the Red Sox to avoid? Let me know all your thoughts on the possibility of the Red Sox trading with the Cubs in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk socks almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Again, it helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Don't forget, you can always get these episodes in podcast form if you want to listen instead of watch. All you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Sea Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the Red Seats.